Cookies. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming to the first uh, event that Olympus is hosting in the Gainesville area. This is our new store. Welcome. I appreciate you guys all coming. We're still waiting on a few of so the stragglers pointing in the right direction. Um, today we had Shane from PRS. He's the guy that sells us all of our centric brakes come in to uh, hopefully give you guys some good tips on how to avoid comebacks, warp rotors, friction transfer issues, stuff like that. Um, we opened our store here in March and uh, we're, we're going really strong. We started off with two drivers, we're already up to four. Uh, the idea is that you guys keep following us, we keep getting bigger. Um, we want to partner with you to sell you the finest auto parts available in the aftermarket. Um, our delivery times around here have been really good. If you're a local guy, you should notice anywhere between 10 and 15, sometimes 20 minutes. If you're a Warrington guy, I apologize, you're looking at about 30 or 40, depending on traffic. Um, we've had some real good success with the people that we have out here. There's the store manager standing in the back. Uh, Mike Cunningham, the assistant manager, is over here. Uh, Donna, one of our best drivers, is over here in the corner. Um, we have a few more people from Olympus coming, but uh, I think everyone already knows the term. He's our, our top salesperson in the Chantilly market. He's the one that you guys call. Um, Charlie does not work every day. I know we all love Charlie and we want to support him. When he is not available or if he is tied up, Stephanie in the back here is very capable. He's been helping out a lot of customers in this market, getting some really good feedback. David Reyes is over here eating some food. We had Nora at the front counter checking people here. in. There she is. Uh, JB is our, our, I guess, district general manager, vice president of the company. He kind of does it all. He's the one that made this whole thing happen. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, a couple more of our sales. This is Kelly Brown and Paula. Um, we can't see you. We are. We are a family company. We've been running by the same guy since 1986. It happens to be Kelly's father, Mike. Uh, so if you have any rocks to throw, direct them. She's, uh, she's done a great job, and we really appreciate you guys coming out. Um, the one thing I will say about Olympus is that we've been family run since 1977. Uh, we're, we're a very tight-knit group of people. I've been with the company for 12 years. I've known JD since he had green hair and Walter, for what, eighth grade? Something like that. Uh, we go way back. It's a, it's a family feel. Uh, we want to be successful out here. And in order to do that, we need you guys on board with us. Um, Shane, while he does sell Eccentric and a few other products, if you had time to walk around, if you've been on the tour, you know we sell the top quality in the business. We try to stick with OE parts. Whatever came off the car goes back on. That way you guys don't have comebacks to deal with. Nobody wants comebacks. Uh, our service times, you get your car count up. We really do appreciate all the help you've got. Um, I'm never going to talk bad about our competition. Uh, we do have World Pack and Auto Plus and Advance and Napa and a whole bunch of guys in this market. Um, one thing you won't see from Olympus, uh, we're never going to advertise to your customers. We want people bringing their cars to you to get fixed correctly. There are no reward programs set up. We're not setting up any kind of discount programs for do-it-yourselfers. You guys are the ones that get the cars fixed the right way the first time. We want to partner with you. Uh, in order to do that, you need to buy some parts from us. And in order to do that, you need to learn about them. So I'm going to give it over to Shane. Uh, at the end, please don't run away as soon as he's done. So we're going to do that raffle uh, for some gift cards and some swag. Uh, thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it. Take it away, Shane. I woke up at 420 and cooked all that barbecue myself and that wrap was homemade. How was it? Really great. Good time to wake up. It was worth it. It is a great time to wake up. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've done uh, a whole bunch of these. Uh, not a crowd like this. I like it. A lot of times I'm just going to like some bigger shops and stuff. And this is really uh, exciting for me to have all these different shops and all of the different input we can get in this room here. So um, I own Pro Rep Sales as a rep agency. Um, we cover the southeastern United States. Um, last year, I sold $23 million of the Centric in the Southeast. Um, I've got five guys that work for me, and we sell a lot of Centric in the Southeast. So you can think you grow every year and get stronger and stronger. They've been a customer for I don't even know how long before I moved up to the board. You know, they were a customer. Um, we've done some things, added some domestic stuff over the years, and growing the line with them. Um, but anyway, we're just going to go through a few things. I try not to be like the guy who just read the book in the car before I walked in. Um, I won't 
don't feel like through a PowerPoint or anything. I'll jump around like I'm ADD and all that kind of stuff. So just bear with me. I'll come back around to the to point when, uh, when I need to. Um, so I assume everybody here is view centric. Okay, that's a good step. So then I have our product. All right, I showed some videos earlier. Um, we're going to touch on a few different things. Let me uh, pull up something here. So I'm going to flip through this. Uh, currently, we have these DCs, Miami. Our home office is in City of Industry in California, um, Seattle, Colorado, and Kentucky. Now that's our chassis division is in Kentucky. Um, Centric was started in 1999. Uh, from 99 to today, they've grown from a startup, basically brick company, to $650 million in sales last year. You know, I remember being out 10 years ago selling Centric and hearing everybody go, oh man, well, you know, I love that Ray Bestis, I love that Wagner, I, I love that Bendix, you know, I, I love this, this, and that. Now you go in there, they love that Centric, you know, because they've had that success with it. So I think the company's come a long way and displaced some of the major, major brake players out there in the market to prove that, you know, we are the real deal and what we're bringing to the market. What we're focused on is not the retailers. We're a great alignment for our interest because we don't focus on the retail brand. You're not going to see the center brand of the retailers. Um, online, you're going to see it, but not in the retailers, not on the street. There is a big online presence of it. Um, so, but that's why we, we work well with these guys. But really, our focus is the installer. Our focus is helping you guys. Like our tech department is dynamite. I know nobody freaking calls it. I understand. I get it. Okay. But if you ever had a chance, if you ever had an issue, I, I, when I was in Florida, I ran into it all the time. I ran into it all the time because guys down there would have these freaking swamp buckets. And it was a bastardized junkyard truck of parts that they had no freaking clue in there. So they'd call the tech department, they'd have a master cylinder in their hand, they'd have a micrometer, and they'd start just asking questions. All right, what diameter is this for? What diameter is that for? And eventually they'd get around to figuring out what master cylinder it was for that guy. Um, so I guess down there I was dealing a lot more than When I came up here, there's no Subarus in Florida. So when I came up here, I started hearing about all these Subaru issues. You know, you put the rear rotor on and you bolt the wheel on and it won't turn. You know, what's going on? So I called the tech room, what's up with this? And they're like, are you stupid? And I go, no, I'm from Florida. <laughs> I'm not stupid. I don't know what this is. It's called rust. I'm like, what the hell is rust? I didn't have a clue. You know, I just, in Florida, that doesn't happen. The other thing, the first brake job I did when I moved up here after a year in my Toyota Avalon I had, I'll show you some pictures of that in a minute. Um, you guys have to pound the shit out of these rotors to come off. <laughs> and four of them just fall off. I was like, what the, the hell's going on? I didn't have the tools to pound the rotor off because I've never had, had it done to do it. So anyway, um, I do a lot of brake jobs myself um, for friends, family, whatever. It keeps me sharper with you know, what I'm doing. I'm out here talking. I can talk to you guys because I'm actually doing the job. I probably do a lot of brake job. Um, and I do everything from my buddy's Ranger he brought in, the old 90s Ranger, to my landlord's C63 Mercedes-Benz. Um, so I'll, you know, I, I like to work on a big game and everything. I like to figure out why, when we get a defect, the hardware bag was never open. And then when I go to put it on and it takes 15 minutes aside to put on, I go, oh, that's why. <laughs> Sometimes those hardware kits, they, they take a long time to, to dig with. And if everything looks good, you can just get it on and get going with it. Um, but that's some of the things that, you know, me being a little more hands on, that, you know, I've picked up to why, you know, you guys do what you do and why we do what we do. Um, Is the not use of hardware going to print more? No. Ah, that's your comeback. I mean, if you don't want to use the brand new hardware, look, the, the biggest, here, let's, let's, here, here's a perfect example. I got, I got this for right there. Oh, right there. Oh, right there. All right. So, when the winters are really bad here, all of a sudden, right after a really crappy winter, my phone starts blowing up. The pads don't fit me down. The pads don't fit me down. Last year, I had some problem. This year, we have a bad winter. We're salting the roads like crazy, grinding the roads, doing all this stuff, and all of a sudden, the next spring, the pads don't fit. I gotta go to the grinder and grind the pads. Okay. One of the unique things that we have with our tech department, and this is who did this analysis a couple years ago for me, is when you call our tech department, 
They basically have a room exactly like this with every single OEM part we ever got. We buy every part, and that's why we're so good at cataloging and getting things done, because we don't just go by OE data. Because what a lot of our rotor competitors, for instance, will do is they'll have a part number for a Toyota Avalon, let's just say 2006, and then they'll have a part number for a 2006 ES350. Can you please tell me what would be different between those two rotors? Exactly nothing. But they got two different part numbers. We have one because we bought both of those rotors and we realized it's the exact same both of them. So we're not going to have a duplicate inventory. Because a lot of times it's like, well, I'm out of that rotor. But they really have it, it's just listed for something else. And you know, it's the counter guy that doesn't really know how to ask the right questions. Or, or it's when you call a retailer, you know, and you're, you're like, all right, I need, a, I need a set of wiper blades for this Jeep. And the retail guy goes, okay, what size engine? And you go, it's a 22 inch blade, bro, come on, man. You know? That's the kind of stuff. <laughs> of the retail, that's props to you guys. So anyway, this was a, a perfect example. Um, guy called up, my pad doesn't fit. I actually gave him the pad and try. So I really wanted to get out there and see what was up because I'm like trying to win his business. I gave him something to try right out the gate. It doesn't fit. So I run over there, we mic my pad, we mic his old pad. <coughs> he bought some TRD pads from Toyota. They fit. Everything fit but mine on his calendar. Okay. This is all tied into the hardware. So what we have the uniqueness of doing is taking my pad that didn't fit, sending it back to tech, they get the OE virgin caliper that's never been on the road, hasn't ever seen any corrosion. And guess what? It fits. That's the pad that didn't fit, and it fit on all sides, both sides. This was the clearance. The OEM sample, the TRD pads, and our alleged pads that didn't fit. So, you know, what you guys are running into out there is the corrosion. You know, do I need to use the hardware? Yes, but sometimes the hardware may get too tight if you really don't clean that caliper bracket. Not with a wire brush, like with a five. Because what happens is, is the corrosion will build up behind that piece of hardware. And as that pad is moving back and forth, that hardware will wear itself a little bit so that it fits that pad perfect. When you go and you leave the old hardware on and put the new pad on there, it sometimes doesn't want to move as freely. It doesn't want to disengage from the rotor and it has problems hanging up. So that's a case by case. I mean, you know, if you if, if, if you roll in and, you know, let's say the, let's say the caliper looks like this. I hate turning my back to you guys. This is just the setup I'm, I'm done with today. So. Um, So, you know, I mean, if you see a caliper like this, or this, you know, or, you know, any of these, you know, <coughs> four examples, you know, I mean, you're going to replace the caliper, clearly. But, you know, if you've got any decent corrosion, you're looking under the car, it's pretty rusted everywhere. I mean, I know it's going to take some extra time probably to get that new hardware in there, file down the, the brackets where the pad needs to slide. But, man, you can go on YouTube and find guys all day hammering pads in the caliper bracket, hammering them. Wondering why they burn out in five thousand miles. <laughs> you know, it, it's just amazing when people just don't realize the concept. That, that pad's got to move. And if that pad doesn't move, you know, one's going to wear out faster than the other. You're going to have pulling. You're going to have all, all kinds of, of issues. So, um, with this being up here right now, we really don't have a lot of core issues with Olympus. Um, you guys buy a lot of the loaded calipers. Uh, they sell a ton of my loaded calipers. Um, so, but you know, the, the common things with the cores that are going on forever. So just keep an eye out for that so that you don't get the shock, the sticker shock of them saying, hey, I can't take this core, you didn't return the bracket, the threads were stripped, you know, the threads had a helical in them, you know, I mean, there's a multitude missing the E, the emergency bracket, the springs, little things like that. So. Shane, while you're on that topic, you guys, show of hands, who here would prefer Olympus to only stock unloaded calipers versus our loaded calipers? Anybody? So everyone here prefers us to keep the 142s loaded, loaded with the pads? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because, because what we did is all the import stuff is loaded, all the domestic stuff is not. Okay. So that's, that's what they, I don't think they put a ton of domestic in. Yeah. 
No. So, over in Alexandria and stuff, we're trying to pick up some tires for business and things like that. So, yeah, and in Maryland, there's a lot of pushback. Maryland. They want us to uh, load, carry an unloaded caliper. So, but unlike everybody else, if, you, if you've used that 142 caliper before, you know how nice it is. I mean, that caliper is 100% rebuilt. The only thing we really use is the gas. That's the On the unloaded ones, we will reuse the steel pistons. We will never reuse any colonics. Um, but the 142 is basically the brand. And it has a specific friction that's designed for the car. Already a positive flag, not in a mid grade, not in an entry level. You know, you know what you're getting with that positive flag, etc. So the caliper has the highest level pad. Yeah. Yeah, because what we do when these guys look it up on the screen, or you guys look it up on your screen if you order online with these guys, all you gotta do is look for the word preferred in the description of the century part. When you see that word preferred, basically for us owns OE. But that's what we do. So that we're always going to start you out with what's going to put the car back to that OE spec. You know, if it's a Honda, if it's Japanese, 99% of them came with ceramic. It's like pretty much easy. The problem is, is when everybody wants to slap a mid grade ceramic on a caravan, for instance, and the caravan came with metallic patch in the factory. And then you end up getting comebacks with brake pulsations, brake jugglers, stuff like that because that material. You know, if it's grandma driving it or something like that, no one real aggressive. I had a situation a while back where this one lady had, was her third brake job. First one, two were centric, third one was centric. Never had an issue. It was the mid, our mid-grade 300, 301 pad, you know, great pad, um, 121, you know, white box rotor. You know, two brake jobs, no problem, 60,000 miles each brake job. All of a sudden, third brake job comes around, brings it back, brake job. <coughs> More rotors, you know, it's not really legit, but we'll get to that in a minute. But brake charter. You've got to ask a lot of questions when you're trying to solve a problem. And, and your customer is not always just going to puke out the right information. Long story short, since I only got an hour and I love to talk, her son turned 16, he started driving. <laughs> and there you go. You run the heat levels up, he's breaking late, all of a sudden, the, the friction isn't transferring nice and evenly onto the rotor surface, he's heating it up. And it's Laying chunks of friction on there, causing a brake judder, 